Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I didn't want to make a snowman while I watched this film. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Frozen, which came out in 2010. Written and directed by Adam Green. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows three young people, Joe, Dan and Parker, who have gone off for a bit of a skiing, snowboarding weekend. As they make their way up the mountain on a ski lift for one final run, the ski lift seat shuts down and the three of them are caught high above the mountain. As the whole ski park shuts down for the weekend, the three of them come to realise that not only will they be forgotten over the weekend, but they may actually be found on Monday frozen. So when this film came out, what, nearly 13 years ago now? Yeah, yeah. This was one of those films that I was like, have you seen Frozen? Have you seen Frozen? And then, well, 2013 came along and well, I stopped asking people <laughs> if they had seen Frozen. And to be honest, I'd almost completely forgotten about this movie until I occasionally see the poster or occasionally see a callback to this film. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I still remember. I really enjoyed that film when it came out. Yeah. Uh, so much so that I would continue to follow the, the writer-director into the Hatchet trilogy of movies. Yep. Uh, and then actually I thought, well, I'll just look back and see some of the other stuff that he's done. And he's worked on some other films. He's worked on a TV show. Mm. And I went back further and found out was actually the lead singer of a rock band called Haddonfield Ooh. Uh, and subsequently some of the music that he wrote or performed with that band's actually in this movie as well yeah <laughs> I, I that, that's the thing I remember you tr uh, you know talking about this film back in the day and saying to me like oh Ian you've got to watch this movie it's about these three guys they get caught on a ski lift it was really really good and at the time I was just like man that seems like such a stupid fucking premise but why I'm, am I going to be watching it how is that even scary three people it, going it, on a ski lift it's the lift? situational horror that all takes yes. place in one location and I don't know why but I'm always attracted to those types of movies yeah well, that's it and so then when it appeared on the review list I was just like oh man I've got to watch this stupid ass movie the three of them caught on the ski lift like i was i was this close i'm telling you this close to wiki in it before i watched it but i was like you know what no I, I'm, I'm gonna go in raw you know i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna watch this film and weirdly enough i think that's where i got my cold <laughs> it's after i watched this film <laughs> um but after watching this i was like man this is a good horror movie you know like i'm kind of sick and tired of just faceless killers walking around and killing people and people being killed in really stupid over-the-top gory ways I mean it's fun don't get me wrong I do enjoy it but I feel like some envelopes have been pushed too far where we've kind of lost our way like Gary says a good horror movie only takes a couple of actors or actresses in one area and they're up against something that can kill you which is really realistic Mother you know, Nature. Mother Nature. Like, while I was watching this film, all I could think of was, wow, I, I, I kind of want to watch 47 meters down now because this is that's the kind of same premise. Two people caught in a really bad situation. You know, was it Fall with those two girls that climbed up a really stupidly high tower? Why the fuck would you do that? I don't know, but it's scary as fuck. So with this one... You know, I, I did like the way that the movie kind of started off with the creaky stair lift. Yeah. You know, well, like, that's well, your killer. That is the killer. That is your that is your antagonist for the movie. And yeah. the movie does a, a damn efficient job of establishing the scary looking metallic, you know, structures it's yeah. moving. And, and the sound effects that it's making as well. It's kind of exaggerated yeah oh, totally uh, but like i mean because most horror movies would start off with like the killer making a kill or you know showing you the the horror that's about to unfold over the the rest of the movie yes, this yes. Film's like ski lift <laughs> scary <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's it and i i wasn't feeling it when i first started watching the film you know we've got uh joe lynch played by sean ashmore who you know, you kind of recognise as Bobby from the X-Men movies. You know, Iceman's kind of coincidental we <laughs> right. did that. You know, you've got Dan Walker, uh, played by uh, Kevin Zegers, who I didn't recognise at first, but when I looked up on Wikipedia, it, um, he was one of the security guards from Dawn of the Dead. And then you've got Parker O'Neill, played by Emma Bell, who, who Gary mentioned was the sister to Andrea, Andrea in, the, in Walking Dead. the Walking Dead. So I'm like, oh, I kind of recognise these people from other things. 
And then the three of them th together and they build up this kind of, you know, relationship of Joe and Dan are really close friends and Joe desperately wanted to spend some time with his buddy skiing and snowboarding this weekend because Dan's got this new girlfriend, Parker. And in a weird way, like one of them is the third wheel, either Joe or Parker, you know, Parker feels uncomfortable, like she's kind of invading her boyfriend's kind of, you know, man weekend with his buddies. But then the boyfriend kind of wants to spend time with her and kind of wants her to interact with his closest friend, Joe. But Joe's feeling kind of left out. So at first I'm like, man, fucking annoying teens. I really hope something bad happens to them. <laughs> really annoying teens that look like they're about to head into their 30s. Yeah. But, you know, but the, the film doesn't do any favors in winning you over with the writing. Now, I think yeah, the yeah. actors are kind of okay, uh, but the writing here really just sets them off badly right off the get-go, where they're just like, I mean, they've got to be fairly wealthy, I would imagine, to at least have all the skiing equipment and to yeah, be yeah, where they yeah, are. Yeah. Yet they come up with this convoluted plan to bribe the guy at the ski lift yeah. to get to the top of the mountain to ski down. And so Dan sets up his girlfriend, Parker, to go and seduce him and bribe him. Yeah. And the way he unbuttons her top and pulls out her chest a little bit and like, off you go, go and go and seduce him and tell him that you're girlfriends but and everything. Is, and But this is 2010 horror movies. Dude, it doesn't matter what year know. it is. Well, it's, it of... immediately sets all three of them up as not very likable people. And the fact that when they do get on the ski slope, he starts bitching at her for using up the whole 100. Yeah. And then when... They have the, the I guess, the, the tease yeah. when all the cars stop. And he's just like, oh, look at all those suckers, you know, paid real money. And, <laughs> and he's like, well, I did pay money. I'm like, what, 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 what? It was just really, uh, really oh, set, them, set them up as like, oh, I just can't wait to see what happens to you clowns now. That's it. You're preaching to convert, dude. I was like, these three people are going to get killed by ski lift i don't care about the script i'm trying to well, get behind the characters but i don't actually care about them but it's the fact that the film is also 90 minutes long it's an hour and a half yeah and so you've got to get to the premise pretty quickly because well these characters are not doing anything to keep my attention that much because there's like I said, there's been nothing redeemable about any of them so far. Yeah, oh, totally. You know, but I've sat through two hours of fucking Corey Cunningham. These guys could fucking talk all weekend for me. I don't care. Um, but yeah, you're right. You know, they've, they've set up this attendant, you know, and they think he's a bit of a, a dumbass for allowing them to sneak on board so that they can go all the way up. And then they're skiing down and uh, Joe, Joe Lynch is kind of getting annoyed because he just wants to go as fast as he can and get as many runs in as he can with his buddy. But fucking Parker can't ski for fucking shit. Like she just keeps constantly falling over. And so you're, you're kind of, well, for, for me, I, I, I'm seeing the film language is kind of telling me like, you know, Parker is the third wheel. The two boys wanted to spend this weekend and she keeps getting in the way. And so that feeds into the next sequence, doesn't it? When they get down to the, the, the ski lodge, you know, and Joe's really complaining that he can't believe that Dan brought his girlfriend with him because I would never bring my girlfriend and she can't ski for fuck. And I want to get one last run in, you know, I just wanted it to be a boy's weekend. And so I'm like, okay, I, I get what the film's trying to tell me that something bad's going to happen to these three people. I'm hoping something bad's happening to them because they're really doing my fucking head in. They have the whole cliche of him talking about Parker behind her back and she's kind of walking in to the conversation yeah. and then he's like, oh no, I didn't really mean that. What I meant to say was, we've got a threesome thing going on here. Oh no, oops. But, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I kind of like that, like, if I'm supposed to get annoyed by them because of the way they're acting then it's working, you know. Did the director or the writer purposely script it like that so that you would hate them before the bad things happen? No, because if you look at the publicity material, they were they were trying to set them up as at least three kind of uniquely different people that you might be able to latch onto one, two, or if not all of them, as oh, kind no. of likeable people. But I'm like... I didn't really come across in the in the script. You know, the characters have some good personality and mm. sort of bring these characters to life a little bit so that you, you know, as written, though, not very likable. But as yeah. performed, it's okay. Mm. But now this is where I get 
really, really frustrated right. with the with the writing again uh, is the fact that she's complaining that she's not very good at skiing and that uh, she you know she doesn't really want to go skiing anymore anyway. Yeah, she wants to go back she, to the she lodge. Wants, she wants to go back to the lodge, and the boys are like, "No, you can't do that. You know, chill and sit with us for a minute. You don't go bother where." bothering with your phone so it's a setup for a reason why they won't have their phones later on yeah 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 um but she's like yeah i don't want to go anyway and uh, and lynch is just like well i really want to just fucking bomb it down the ski slope get you know my money's yeah, worth for, closes, for being yeah. here and then it cuts to all three of them getting ready to get on the ski lift and i'm like now they they explain to jason the attendant there that uh, they're gonna bomb it right down so please let us do this one last thing i'm like yeah. she's not bombing it down anywhere no, no, unless no. she's you know, just going to fucking roll all the way yeah, down. Yeah. So why is she getting on anyway? Because they're going to delay everybody if she's going down you, the same slope as them. You need them. a final girl. Well, yeah, you do, but it's it's bad writing getting to that point. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, she shouldn't even be there. I know. And also, what is stopping Lynch just going on his own? If he wants to be like, look, you're here with your girlfriend, I understand it, I respect it, you do that, I'm just going to bomb it down because I, you know, I can. Like, I'm not here with my because girlfriend, I can just do that. So, it was him who wanted to, to yeah, go and do yeah, the bombing yeah. run down. He didn't have to wait for them to either. No, no, no. There's just yeah, so true, many little true, things true. that just annoy me <laughs> before they even get stuck. Whatever happened to night skiing? Uh, what she said's got night skiing. Should have gone there. It's kind of like quiet Hill. It's not as lame. So I totally agree with that. But it's also, like I said, he's he's wanting to stay with his buddy, and he wants to do the run with his buddy because that's what they used to do. They used to run down and race as fast as they can. But he knows his buddy's not planning on leaving his girlfriend, which, in a way, you know, Sean Sean Ashmore's character kind of. He would be, I feel like he would be in the same position if it was his girlfriend he would have brought along inst instead of Parker. So, I, 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 I'm, you're preaching to convert. I hated all three characters as they were getting onto the, onto the, the ski lift and they're heading up. And I'm, I'm like, sorry, I just want to also go back because we've got a little bit more filler, yeah? Right, just right, a little okay, bit more yeah, filler. Yeah, okay. We've got uh, Lynch who ends up trying to help this other character, Susan. Oh, yeah, is the girl, it? yeah, with trying the to mobile help, number. Yeah, yeah, with the whole remembering <laughs> of the mobile number and then him being harassed by her ex boyfriend and then, then flirting outside the cabins before they go back up. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that was really confusing because I started to hate on Joe. And then Joe gets this girl's number, and I'm like, I kind of like him now because he's turned into a less douchebag because he's got a girl's attention. But I'm like, for fuck's sake, just get on the fucking ski lift, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know, I want to see how is this even scary? How is this even considered a horror movie? And uh, I suppose once they get onto the chairs and they start going up, I, I half expected the attendant to be one of those fucking stupid ass attendant characters you see in a horror movie who just, you know, smokes a joint and forgets people on there and flicks the switch off and fucks off. But the way the the writing was, you know, the attendant's actually doing his job, kind of. You know, he, he lets them up and he tells them to be as fast as they can. And then when the, his work colleague buddy comes along and says, look, we're all leaving, we're going to the office. He's just like, oh no! No, I've, he's just like, no. You, the managers just said that you're working next weekend and you can't go to your brother's bachelor's party. Yeah, so right. he goes, oh, I'm gonna storm off and sort this out. Yeah, well, but he he tells the other guy, doesn't he? You got yeah. to, you you got to man these. We've got three people still going up to come down. And so when the other attendant sees three people racing down that we see It's just well, another coincidence. Yeah, it, it's it, the it beginning is. of many. It is, but. It's not a stupid movie kind of thing where he, like I said, he smoked a joint, flicked a switch off and gone, oh, I've forgotten three people out there. He legitimately was told there were three people on this mountain. Three people came down. You wouldn't question it. Well, you would if it was your job. You, you would if you, it was your job in reality. Yeah, I know. Also, 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 <laughs> also in the reality of uh, the situation like this, I mean, I don't work at a ski lodge, <laughs> but from the small amount of research that I've done, there's like a flag system that they put a flag on the last seat that's going up so that yeah. because in this film, there is literally no other staff member at the top of the ski slope, which from again, which is, my research that totally always is yeah, yeah. so that when the flag from the chair at the bottom comes up to the top the guy at the top knows there's no one else behind that flag coming up yeah safe to stop the machine yeah yeah, yeah. so it like it it stretches your realm of disbelief this film and if you're willing to suspend it you will get wrapped up and, ca and caught up in this scenario which yeah, i guess yeah. is plausible to an extent and then in which case you can kind of get engrossed in the horror 
Yeah, I mean, there's like I said, there's a lot of horror movies that do that. Like, like I said, I haven't seen Fall, but I'm like, how the fuck did two girls get on this really huge fucking tower with no well, security? Well, I mean, I don't want to talk about them. Fall because I really like that film, but that's but there was no one there to oversee or safety. These but, were just two climbers. That, that but that's to do what I'm saying. This is in an suspending... actual public resort, so no, that's why I but have you're... trouble suspending my disbelief. With some horror movies, you do have to suspend your belief just a little bit. Just for me, like I said, for me, I'm sat there looking at these three like. Okay, so now they've turned off the power. Now the three of you are caught in here. Where's the horror element? I, I still don't understand. But then well, I was just like, actually, it's dark. It's night. You're stuck on a fucking chair in the middle of fucking nowhere. And you're 50 feet in the you're air. 50 feet it's in the freezing air. cold. It's and freezing the park's cold. not opening for like five more days. Yeah, and that's when, like, like I said, suspending my disbelief is one thing. But then reality starts to kick and going, oh, fuck. They're really fucked. <laughs> you know, <they're>, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, by the end of it, I couldn't feel my finger. I was sitting there. What? Come on. However, the horror doesn't really kick in for them immediately. No, because no. They still believe that somebody, obviously, as you would think, a member of staff would still be around. It somebody, would. yeah, it's just a fault. It's just a mechanism issue. And eventually they will get up to the mountain and ski down. It was fucking stupid that it just felt like they'd sat there for three hours going, somebody will come along. I'm like, bruh, I'd have been gone in 10 minutes. If the lights are gone, I don't fucking, I don't care. Are you jumping too? I, I dangle my fucking ass. I don't give a fuck. If I'm stuck on a ski lift at night time, after 10 minutes, I'm like, the lights are off. Nobody's coming to us. Okay. This is when it started, was it? It started snowing or started raining? It started I'm, snowing, I'm, yeah. I, I agree. Like the escalation of events has been, been pretty fantastic up mm. to this point because it just keeps notching it up, notching it up until the point where our characters are now terrified for their own lives yeah yeah uh, however here comes kane hodder <laughs> jason <laughs> he's here to the rescue like how much was he paid to just appear in this sequence well he was actually i mean because he works mostly as a stunt coordinator and oh, he yeah, was yeah. a stunt coordinator for this film so and he's also a good actor yeah, yeah. Well, so here he is to the rescue or not he's literally just heading up the mountain this big plow <laughs> Yeah, it's up a little bit. And then he gets the call over the radio, like, ah, oh, just head back down now. We're going, run, 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 run. <laughs> yeah, we're going He's home like, now. Oh, okay, then. And he starts reversing. And at that point, start throwing down their helmets and their, their skis and their gloves and their masks. And they mistime every fucking thing. <laughs> This is where, again, where I'm like, coincidences are starting to mount up to the point of, oh, can I continue to believe the events are really unfolding? Because well, yeah. like, they didn't even aim for the cab itself. They no. kept throwing it in front of it. I'm like, it was almost underneath you at one point, if that's not it. was underneath you. Yeah, that's it. I How felt did you the positioning. Miss? I'm just like, you know, at least turn around and throw down and shit like that. Or, you know, like I said, the helmets you could have thrown down, your skis, anything heavy could have hit the top of that cab and at least got his attention and they would have been safe. But... In fairness, reality, if they'd done that, the movie would have yeah, been I know. 45 I, fucking minutes long. I know long. it's a tease to go, oh, you know, it's like they could get rescued now. You know, it's people trapped on an island and a helicopter flies past, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. they don't see you. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of scenario. But yeah, it, it's it's it was just that they had so much, so many things that they threw. And the timing of him turning around and reversing each time was just... Uh, uh, yeah. It was actually cartoonish and actually borderline comical. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's the same when Parker's just like, I'm going to have a cigarette because she's the only smoker out of the group. And she goes to have a cigarette, but she drops her one glove. And it's kind of the movie's like, oh, she's dropped the glove. What's she going to do with her hand now? And I'm like, are you on serious, it? Parker? Like, you are freezing up here and you're just like, oh, I'll just leave my glove there. And, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> like, you're freezing. Like, you would tuck it into your sleeve, into your jacket. Oh, it's like, this is where the characters just really started to grate on me. This is after fucking Bobby Drake's decided he's going to piss off the seat. Yeah. Because he didn't want to sit there and pee himself because Parker's going on that she's trying to pee herself. <laughs> and they're telling her that she's to sit up as well. And she's like, no, I can't. I can't do it myself. Um, but Dan, you know, I, I got to give it to his character. He's caught between these two people fucking giving each other shit that, you know, they're stuck in this predicament. And so Dan's just like, I'm going to jump. I can, I can, I can probably make it. Well, I'm looking at the floor and like, bro, that's gonna be like hitting concrete. At well, yeah, per hour. yeah, you know, <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> not snow anymore. That's fucking pure fucking ice. <laughs> 
Well, he, uh, he, he, he apparently mentioned earlier that, you know, he's jumped off a ski lift many a times. Oh, I'm sure. And then as he's about to lower himself down, he's like, oh, I lied. I'm terrified. <laughs> like, well, don't do it then, you idiot. Why not dangle drop yourself? Exactly. And, and at the same time that he kicked off his, his sled. And I'm like, now surely you would have kept that on if yeah. you were going to jump because your weight fall would have been dissipated throughout the sled instead of... I mean, people jump out of helicopters and snowboard down. You could have just done the same thing at an angle. Not that I've ever done it, I don't know. I mean, that. it's still, at that height, incredibly dangerous. Like, because it's also at an angle, his ankles or his legs or his knees would buckle and break and snap. Yeah. I mean, well, here we go. He jumps. <laughs> oh, man. When I heard that fucking noise, I was like... Oh shit, that's the horror element for me. That's the fucking... Yeah. <laughs> oh, like... But then the special effect is so awful. <laughs> it looks like he's got a bloody... A sausage or something. I was like, that's supposed to be a bone? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it didn't look very good. I think it was... Was it was it Alive or The Grey or something that kind of taught me that obviously, like, being out in the snow, you know, your blood would freeze long. You know, pretty quickly after, if you had any open wounds. Mm. So you would probably die. This guy's, what, sat there for like two hours, just bleeding profusely, just fucking screaming well, his head off. Oh, my God. I mean, we get the ridiculous moment where she chucks down her scarf that lands in the trees, <laughs> oh, yeah. like chucking down other stuff for him to grab hold of. So and he's like, tie a tourniquet over your leg to stop the bleeding. And he ties it over his goddamn trouser leg anyway. I'm like, that's not going to help very much, if at all. <laughs> I mean, this movie did not actually make me want to go skiing or anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But again, I mean, I've got a natural fear of heights anyway, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be panicking just being up there. So maybe if he, at least he's on the ground now. Oh, right? wait. oh that motherfucker on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the shot overhead where his legs are pointing and his feet are pointing <laughs> at different <laughs> angles. I'm like, <laughs> but it, it was the fact that when he tried to move, when he's moving back and forth to try and grab <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I'm like, and the bro just is, keeps stabbing into his I'm back. like, this is cartoonish. Like, this is funny now. This is, where's the horror gone? Uh, and then, oh boy, then do we hear the wolves. Yeah. Shut up, kid, shut up. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, we see one. One turns up, and I saw that one, and I... You know, like, I don't know if it was really there right in front of the actor or if it was just like, it, it was shot and then placed in front of it. I don't know if it was a well-trained wolf. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's that's brilliant. You know, for me, I'm sat, I, like, you know, we've suspended our disbelief for at least 45 minutes of this movie now. I can suspend my disbelief a little bit more that there's a, now a wild fucking pack of wolves on this mountain at night time. I mean, didn't you say before we turned the camera on, it's just like... There no, are, uh, <laughs> they're somewhere in New England, right? I mean, they're in a fictional town that's yeah, named yeah. after the hometown of the director. Uh, but this is a commercial ski lodge, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Now, how many ski lodges do you know that to have its customers regularly attacked or hunted <laughs> by a wild wolves. pack of bloodthirsty, super aggressive wolves? Yeah, not very many, if any at all. As a matter of fact, in this part of America, I don't think there actually are any wolves living in, in the forest. Yet alone wolves that would patient, patient, patiently wait for meals to drop out of the goddamn sky. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, you know, they're, they're not vultures, right? I, they are I, hunting animals. Well, I think that's the thing. They were lured by the blood, well, which obviously has been splattered on the floor. That has Dan's frozen legs. or not frozen? I don't know. Is the blood still in the air? I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely on the ground. And, and the smell of the meat and him coming out, the noise of him screaming screaming as well i mean we see this first one and they kind of scare it off and for me i was just like oh fuck i didn't think that was where the movie was gonna go you know that there would be wolves turning up so then when joe decides that he's going to try to shimmy along the cable wire to the next chair to get to a ladder to get down to save his buddy before he bleeds to death i'm like all right you should have been doing that within the first fucking 10 minutes of being stuck up here but you and know. now we get another comedy moment where he slips and he's like, oh, there's too much ice on the thing. Yeah. So they start breaking off all of the ice and snow on the <laughs> thing. On the <laughs> and Dan sat there like, oh, it's all falling off my head. 
<laughs> we we shouldn't laugh. But... No, we shouldn't. But it, I think that's what makes this film pretty good is that we in, we, we enjoyed ourselves. I'm kind of invested in the scenario now. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I'm also terrified about these wolves coming back. I mean, I've had horror movies within the first fucking 10 minutes where I'm just like, man, I just want to throw myself through the TV because it's just absolutely stupid. Yeah. But with this, I was like, I needed to see where the next stage was going to go because it just... It seemed plausible, but it did seem plausible only in in, in, movie in the world. movie world. Yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> well, Joe Lynch, he he doesn't get very far, does he? Because he's like, oh, oh, my approach is wrong, and he comes back and yeah. he realizes all of his hands are cut to pieces. So yeah, it's like, oh, apparently the the cables are fucking made out of razor wires and <laughs> cut to the bloody <laughs> bone. I was like, well. That's a bit of an exaggeration on the reality of these these metal things. But you've got to keep them secluded in this one spot. If he could just get across the wire really quickly, like I said, movie over in 50 minutes. It, yeah, but it just means we're kind of like in Bizarro, bizarro world. It's yeah. not really ours. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but then, well, then the wolves come back. Oh, man. i I got to give the director credit, Adam Green, for this sequence. It's like, you know, if you're going to make a memorable sequence, audio, I think, is much more better than visuals. Well, it's the fact of the reaction from mm. the two that are observing it, or then are also told not to look. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I mean, the scene was quite well foreshadowed, actually, earlier, when the three of them were still sat up there talking and discussing possible worst ways to die. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, jumping from a tower. Sarlacc pit. I'm sorry. The what? Uh, and uh, and Dan was just like, well, you know, I, I think being eaten by a shark, like like from the scene in Jaws. Yeah. It's not so much of the being eaten like a surfer where the shark just gets here. It's the fact that you see the fin coming. It's mm. the fact that you know death is coming right for you and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And so, yeah, when he's down there, legs broken to pieces and he's being circled by the wolves. Oh my so God, it's just yeah. like the foreshadowing is paying off now as he's being surrounded by these cute, fluffy looking wolves that are so playful. Man, and it's just, again, like you mentioned, the audio yeah. of the growls and the barking, which, you know, we don't m see many of the wolves doing it, mm. but the sound effects in there to make it look like it's much more terrifying. But if you actually look at the a still image, the dogs are in there just giving him lots of kisses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They're very well trained wolves. The guy, yeah. the guy that handled the wolves on this film was the same guy from Dances with Wolves. Oh, the nice! The exact same wolf handler. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, they were mostly very well behaved. There was one shot where one wolf came in very close to the uh, to the actor, mm. and they had to quickly call cut and get the handler in there and to get that wolf back just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this sequence, I will say, I think is. From, you know, Dan jumping and then Dan being circled by the wolves with the sound effects playing and their reactions up in the ski lift yeah. is probably the best handled sequence of horror in the whole film. Yeah, I mean, he's screaming, don't let her watch, don't let her watch. So then you've got this bonding moment between, well, I say bonding, between Joe and Parker as they're trying to hold each other, though they want to jump down and help him, but they know they can't because they're just going to end up dead as well. And there's literally nothing they can do. I mean, all I could think of was the grey while I was watching this whole sequence, Matt. I was like, if Liam Neeson comes out of a bush with bottles on his knuckles, just start <laughs> fucking shit out, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, we didn't need to see the wolves tear Dan apart. Hearing it though, oh my God. And it's the fact that like, like in, in my mind, it's like they must have ripped out his throat or his jaw and then he's bled to death and he's gargling. <laughs> You know, it was fucking horrible. And what I what I thought was even well done was I, I expected the next shot, like the next morning when they wake up, for us to see the body, you know, for the movie to go, here you go, here's the gore that you wanted to see. But what actually happens is that they just carry on between the two characters and the snows come down. So Dan's body is down there and it's getting covered. And so you're like, fuck, it's another day. Like, yep. like th th this movie pans over like three days. That's right, yeah. And it's yeah. like, wow. Well, I'm also just like, wow. Like, you didn't have to necessarily die there, Dan. Like, <laughs> no. you are on the ground. Granted, your legs are F-U-C-K'd, <laughs> you know? But where is your snowboard? All right, it's just there. Lay on it. Your arms are still working. You've already said you can't feel your legs anymore. <laughs> you ain't going to be using them for a very, very long time anyway. 
just pull yourself down the goddamn mountain. You've got a sled right there. Just use it. <laughs> oh, no, he's going to feed himself to the wolves. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> hey, there's another thing. Right? Granted, he jumped and fell when there was, you know, like, the snow. There's been no snow for a while, but it had then snowed, I think, like, all night. Yeah, 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 yeah. The snow's not compacted and set yet, so no. it would have broken the fall. He could have just waited until I some know. snow fall and, and then broke his fall, maybe not have damaged himself as much and... And also, 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 <laughs> when he jumped, he just went straight down. He like, did. he didn't even bend his legs. I mean, I didn't cushion him or I didn't he's gone for my yeah, shoulder. Yeah, stop, drop, and roll fucking, or something. I don't... Yeah. There's so many things there. Taking everybody else's <laughs> jacket for extra padding. The only, only defense I can give for that is that these these plebs that are sat up there, yeah. they shouldn't have been up there at this point in time anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are, are suffering from frostbite, and they're hungry, and they're yeah. cold, and yeah. they're not thinking straight. That's no. like the only blanket excuse I, mean, I can give them in, for the terrible decisions that they make. In fairness, bro, we are both agreed. They weren't thinking straight at the moment they tried to get on the ski lift at the beginning. It's right. You know, so they, they threw it out the window. <laughs> I I kind of liked this next segment where they they have this whole conversation on the scare, uh, on the chairlift where Joe basically just blames Parker for letting him jump. No, Parker blames him first. Oh, Parker blames, sorry. Parker and that blames. causes him to get really pissed off. Yeah, and the two of them just kind of have this argument, but they, they can't go nowhere. <laughs> they honestly can't go anywhere. And it's it's harsh that the two of them are blaming each other, but at the same time, they're dealing with survivor's guilt, you know, and so they are looking for somebody to blame. And Parker does blame herself. You know, Joe kind of blames himself. Both of them believe that they shouldn't be up there in the first place or Dan would still be alive. You know, if Parker had stayed back at the lodge, then at least she'd have known that the two of them would have been lost. They might have come down together faster on the... You know, this all these scenarios are playing out. So while the two of them are having... This is where I kind of started to bond or slightly relate to the characters or at least the actors playing the characters is this sequence where, you know, they're hating on each other for this horrible thing to happen that they've got no control over. But at the same time, they're they're sorry to each other because they they do they kind of you know reconcile at the end of the argument and they hug you know and I was I was praying I was fucking deep praying that the two of them would not kiss and start <laughs> making out <laughs> oh, yeah. over Dan's dead body you know which they don't which was really cool but then again the next morning comes and fucking she's left her hand on the bar overnight. Because she's got no glove. And so she has to peel her hand off the bar, taking off the skin. Now, I know he's going to rip this sequence apart, but the film needed a little bit extra, a little bit of gore while the <laughs> film was going on. And so we got this bit, which which is cool. Well, the whole film is called what? Frozen, Frozen yeah. right? So now apparently these actors are freezing up here, even though they have no breath. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, now, granted... Like, no CGI, no sound stages. They filmed it on location, on that mountain. Wow. That height, you know, up in the air. So much so that most of the camera operators went, eh, I'm not going up there to film it, sorry. <laughs> and so the director himself was up there with the camera filming this because the other crew were like, I ain't going up there, it looks dangerous as fuck. <laughs> it <laughs> moves. <laughs> right, and the actors are literally on an actual operating ski lift, you know. Wow. So And they were on there that cool. time. So all of that, yeah, credit to all of that. But... We only really see some breath from the actors when they're sort of at the bottom of the ski slope, really, when mm. they're talking to that other lady. Yeah, yeah. And so the idea that it is freezing up there, I think the film is trying to twist the dial to go, they are freezing, but like we're conditioned to know when it's freezing, when you see that breath. And the yeah. fact that there isn't any up there, it kind of goes, well, maybe it's not that cold then. But, but then she's getting frostbite in her hand, literally sticks to the metal. And I mean, I don't know how, how cold a climate or you know, freezer or whatever you've been in. Mm. But like if your flesh or your hands are out and that cold for that long, they would go red. It Blue, would literally numb, hurt yeah. to even close your yeah. hands. Yet alone for this numbskull to keep her hand out of, obviously lost through her glove away. And the fact that she didn't keep her hand concealed at all is just moronic. And yeah, the fact that the, 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 fact it, that the three of them, when there were three of them up there, yeah. don't even do their zippers all the way up. They're not huddled and keeping themselves protected at all. So yeah, okay, she gets bloody frostbitten and her hand sticks the thing. And yeah, it is a... It, it, again, it's hilarious because she's like trying to put her hand away and she raises the safety bar instead. <laughs> it's just like, oh God. 
Maybe they've got no breath because they're things. Yeah, that, I thought that too. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, they're all things. They're all things. <laughs> But on the second day, Joe has decided that, fuck it, even though I've cut my hands to pieces and my buddy is dead and I hate his girlfriend, I'm gonna shimmy across the wire to the next seat and I'm gonna get down that ladder and I'm gonna get us help. And so he does, he, he shimmies his way across the wire, rips his hands to even more pieces. The fucking chair itself that he leaves Parker on actually kind of, something snaps or something and it starts These to These coincidences are just... <laughs> yeah, I know. And he manages to get across. I was like, fuck, yeah, mate. Get down that ladder as fast as you can before those fucking wolves come back. And he, he does. He, like, what was it? He says, can you throw my stick down? So I've got someone to defend myself when I get down there. And she's such a flit. <laughs> he fucking throws in the like, completely wrong direction. <laughs> I don't know. She just looks like she drops it because the seat <laughs> falls while she's on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he looks at her and like, 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 how incompetent are you? Yet the moment he gets down the ladder, it's like three, not even three seconds in film time before he grabs it anyway. Yeah, and he's so fighting I'm like, off well, wolves. she didn't do that bad a job. That's it. He's fighting off the wolves, and he's just like, right, I'm gonna get on my snowboard, I'm gonna get help, and I'll see you later. And he's and he's, he's off down the mountain, and you're like, okay. And then the day passes, and Parker's just left up there, and it turns to nighttime. I'm like, oh, he didn't forgive you, did oh, yeah, he? Yeah. He's not sending anyone help. <laughs> That's it. I'm like, wow, he's fucking left her. But at the same time, I'm like, no, nah, I'm all fucking dead. We did see the wolves chase him down the mountain. Yeah. And she wakes up the, on the third day. Her eyes are kind of encrusted with, um, with, with ice. You know, she picks at her skin on the side, but she'd been pre-warned. Look, you're getting frostbite, you're getting frostbite. And she does pick it, which... I mean, in fairness, it takes off the top bit. So I don't know how frostbite works. I it's dead skin. So yeah, you're literally just peeling off your flesh that's frozen. Right. So as long as she gets back to like some warm place, it'll probably heal better. Oh, you just put plaster on it. You'll be fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, she's, her fucking hand should be fucking <laughs> fucked if anything more. Um, yes. But she, she kind of comes to the realization that nobody is coming to get her. You know, something's happened to Joe and she needs to get off this fucking seat. So she, she starts to lower herself down, doesn't she? She does, yeah. And it's ready to drop. But then the seat goes. The seat goes anyway. And then, you know, the whole cable snatches down. Then the cable starts fraying. And, and she literally drops about like 10, maybe 15 <laughs> yeah, feet at the most. Like, that was safe. Yeah, exactly. Well, then, you know, just to top it all off, the bloody seat crashes into her leg yeah. or her foot. Yeah. So she's like, well, I can't run away, so I'm just going to have to, oh, do what Dan should have done about an hour ago <laughs> and pull myself down the goddamn mountain. Oh, no, but there's the wolves. See, now this bit I was very surprised by. You know, she, she drags herself down the mountain and she comes across the, the, the leftovers of Joe's body and there's a wolf staring right at her face and I'm like, oh, fuck, she's going she gonna to be killed right here. Um, and then, like, the pack leader must have told the other wolf like now nah, we're full we don't need to eat her or she's had enough <laughs> leave her alone it's, it communicates something because the wolf turns around and leaves her and yeah. she's safe to travel down the rest the, the rest of the mountain on her own and i was like well that's cool um <laughs> pulls herself into the road and then she's like ah, i'm done that's it <laughs> well she gets down there doesn't she she sees the first car and she signals in like it doesn't stop so then she just fucking collapses and then the second car comes along, almost crushes into her. He, the, the driver sees her, picks her up, puts her in the mountain, and he's trying to question her. Where have you been? What's going on? What have you done? And you can just see this complete shock on her face as they're driving to the hospital. And I thought, you know what? That's, that's really quite realistic for the end of kind of a traumatic experience instead of like her screaming her head off or, you know, we're seeing the search party going up there and scaring off the wolf. I honestly, there was a point where the wolf was looking at her. I thought somebody was going to shoot it and that was where she was going to get rescued. Mm -hmm. and, the, and there was nothing. The wolf just left her. So her just staring out the window, I was just like, you know what? Yes, thank you, movie. You you started off pretty fucking stupid, and yeah, there was completely unbelievable bits. But by the end of it, I'm like, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, then, what were your favourite scenes in the movie? Um, I had a, I had a couple. The the lights switching off when they um when they're actually on the seats and it's going up and the power's turned off and the lights are going off as it kind of goes off behind them. You know, and the the realization starts to set in then that actually the whole, you know snow camp is closed down and nobody is coming and they've been forgotten that was pretty terrifying i mean dan jumping 
I ain't ever going <laughs> to fucking forget that shit. Whenever anybody mentions the word frozen to me now, all I'm going to hear is crunch. Right. I, know, <laughs> it, 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 I, I appreciate it because there's so many scenes in movies where characters jump from great heights and yeah, they just yeah. fucking walk it right off. And I'm yeah. like, uh-uh. No. At, least, at least this film kind of got it right. <laughs> this <It's> motherfucker. <laughs> and same with him when the wolves turn up. You know, like... Like, the director could have gone over the top with budget and had a fake body in there and real wolves ripping it apart and gone for the gore level. But did you really need that in this movie? No. What you needed was people to be kind of shocked of the environment that they're in. So when you've got those two people huddled together and you're hearing the gargling and the ripping and the screaming and the just the... Just the imagery of what these wolves were doing to him was just enough in my head that I didn't need to fucking see it. Parker, when she started to talk about her puppy, like, like this was pretty harsh for me because I, I do have a dog. Um, but the fact that she she talking about how she just got this new puppy and she'd left him there and nobody knew that she was coming away this weekend. So he was literally going to starve to death and she wasn't going to be there. And all, or the imagery or the image that she had in her head of the dog just sitting, looking at the door, waiting for her to come home and her never to come home. I'm like, I mean, it sounds stupid, but at the same time, in realistic terms, how many times have people done that? They've left their family or their pet, gone out somewhere to never return because something horrible has happened to them. And I was just like, man, that that really hurt me. Probably cocking my little head to the side, I'm wondering when I'm gonna come in, but I won't. And then Parker's hand on the pipe. I just. I thought it was a cool special effect. It is a cool special effect. You but know? then when you see the hand, I'm just like, like what is that on her hand? Like, That's, it doesn't look like any... I mean, that alone should have killed her, if anything, <laughs> over the next couple of days. Because her hand would have frozen. The ice would have probably gone into her blood veins, gone into her brain, <laughs> killed her. I don't know. I don't know science. But I just thought it was a cool it, I agree. effect. It was. Yeah. Had, it was funny. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. I um, Favourite scenes is... Uh, you know what? I'll... Um, the entire escalation of events, even though the coincidences were, you know, like, like pretty daft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked uh, the brakes going on the first time. Yes. And, you know, and them all stopping and, like, watching everybody skiing down. That's actually a director's cameo, you know, when he turns around, the two that are sat behind. Oh, right, That's the right. director and his real-life friend, Joe Lynch. Oh, nice, nice, uh, nice. Because all the characters in this film were based on the director's actual real-life friends. That was how they were written in the script in the first draft, and then they just went... Oh, we don't really need to give them extra names. We'll just call them after your real life friends. Yeah, that was, so, right. yeah. Yeah, that was the director yeah. and his best friend there. Uh, but yeah, so the breaks going on, that first tease of what's to come. But then when the breaks do go on and they are stopped there, then when the lights go out, mm -hmm. then the snow comes in. It's nighttime. It's cold. You know, the plow, it missed them completely. Yeah, then yeah. Dan jumping, the wolf howls, uh, and then Dan being eaten and the signs of frostbite. Like everything just ramped up and up and up and up. So that's the perfect kind of trajectory for a horror film as things intensify as yeah. things get worse yeah. and worse and worse so i kind of really enjoyed all of those steps and that's how like the first time watching this film that's how i got really really engrossed in this situational sort of horror movie yeah uh but i will say i think the most effective sequence is one that you've also mentioned is dan sat there pulling his hat down over his oh, eyes because yeah. he just doesn't want to see what's coming for him because it was foreshadowed earlier yeah and then the fact that he's screaming uh, to Joe, don't you dare let her watch. Yeah. As he's trying to, uh, as Joe's trying to mask it, uh, hit Dan's girlfriend from watching as he's getting absolutely torn to shreds. And we yeah. don't see it. We just hear it. Yeah. And that, as we know in horror, sometimes it's uh, what you don't see. It's what your imagination creates for you. And it's far, far worse. Uh, don't you let her laugh! Ian, do you recommend Frozen? I kind of really, really do. I didn't think I was going to. I, as soon as I saw the title and the premise and just, I just thought, man, this movie's going to be so fucking stupid. But at the same time, I kind of went back to maybe teenage me, you know, before I became old and I could pick a thing, pick things apart and I put myself into a situation with environment, you know, like... Like, this movie, I think, would be really good for teenagers to watch before they get to the major, huge, 
gory, over the top horror movies. You know, like I said, it it, it, uh, I, it makes me wonder how many kids have seen this movie <laughs> because it was rented instead of the Disney Frozen movie. <laughs> See now, I I would also like to know like what what would you name this kind of horror? You know, if it, if 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 a guy in a mask stabbing teenagers is a slasher horror, what is it when it's a survival horror? Yeah, survival. It, it's survival horror, like in Mother Nature. It's an element that you actually have no control over. It's just real. You know, it's life. You're you you go out there, you go to do something during the day, and then boom, you're dead by the end of it because coincidences happen this isn't final destination over the top stupid shit you might kind of believe that that's partly what's happening it's three people getting on a ski lift and being forgotten and then having to get themselves out of the situation the director yeah he doesn't hit every major note like you want him to but there are certain things that he does so well that i honestly won't forget this film yeah i am also going to be recommending Frozen. Uh, as, for the most part, I found it really quite tense with a good escalation of horrific events. And I've always rather enjoyed horror films that take place in one room or setting in a fairly believable condition. The film had some great unsettling imagery, sound effects, and utilizes the complete isolation pretty well. It's nicely shot, atmospheric, and it contains a couple of really memorable stomach-churning scenes. For all this to work, though, you might need to uh, suspend your disbelief way higher than the characters were situated. And, you know, on top of all the compounding coincidences that led them to uh, remaining undiscovered, followed by the stupid choices the characters undertake, which almost pushes this film into near comical states. Uh, I found the acting fairly good. The script and character moments were okay overall, but there was really nothing special here. It felt like padding before the next moment to kind of reach a 90-minute runtime, and so scripting characters for me, pretty weak overall. Still, I recommend Frozen. Some great horror moments, no CGI, good location, cool premise. You know, it's good, but I also feel like this one could have been great. Mm. No one knows you're up there. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. What the hell, right? Dude!